Hi, um, I'm going to talk about dead virtual function elimination, which is an optimization that I've recently added to LVM. So here's an example of some code that we'd like to be able to optimize. Uh, we've got a struct with two virtual functions, a second one which inherits from it and overrides them both, and two virtual function calls down at the bottom. Uh, the first call is through a pointer of type A, the base class, so at runtime that could go to either of the implementations of foo. But the second call is through a pointer of type B. We know it must go to B's implementation of bar. So we've got um, A's implementation of bar can't be called from anywhere. We'd like to be able to remove that. So this is what this code currently looks like to global DCE. Um, the constructors are always going to be called somewhere in the program. They take the addresses of the V tables, which contain the addresses of every virtual function. The call sites themselves don't have any references to the actual function themselves or the V tables. They work by loading the V table pointer from the object itself. This means that the virtual functions are always referenced and can never be removed. But LLVM has something that could help us here um, type metadata, which is um, optional metadata added to virtual tables and intrinsics and metadata added to call sites, which allow us to reconstruct this link between the call sites and the targets that they could end up at. Um, so here we've got, you can see the two constants are the virtual, the V tables, which have this type metadata on them. And down at the bottom, a virtual function call where has a normal load to get the V table address out of the object and then this type checked load intrinsic to load the virtual function pointer from the table rather than a normal get and load. We can use this information in global DCE to add links from the call site to all of their possible targets. So the first call site could go to either implementation of foo, the second call site can only go to B's implementation of bar, we know that A bar is now completely unreferenced. We can delete it and replace its entry in the V table with a null pointer. So this obviously isn't always going to be valid. Um, we need to know that we can see every um, call site um, for a particular class. In general, this is going to be valid when you're using visibility hidden and LTO though visibility can be changed on a per class basis. So we actually need, um, uh, we, need sorry. we need the, all base classes must have hidden visibility if they have V tables. Um, this isn't a concept we can reconstruct in LVMIR, it requires uh, source level information. So I added new metadata to represent this new type of visibility. Um, so here's the, some benchmark results for the C++ subset of spec 2006. Um, we get some quite good results on larger benchmarks like Zalang, obviously half the code there isn't used. Um, and some of the benchmarks, obviously, there's no benefit if they're not using virtual functions. I've also tested this on uh, some of the examples for Embed OS, which is um, an embedded real-time operating system and the sort of environment where you're always going to be building with visibility equals hidden because you're not using dynamic linking. And again, we get good results on some of the larger images. Um, so this is committed in LVM at the moment, but it's not yet turned on by default. Um, there are some slight performance regressions caused by using these, the um, extra intrinsic functions for the load that need to be resolved before it can be turned on by default. This also currently requires full LTO. It might be possible to make it work with thin LTO in a similar way to what was recently done with the de-virtualization. And it would also be interesting to investigate using this to remove unused runtime type information, which is currently ignored by adding the extra intrinsics for every dynamic cast exceptions that might need the RTTI. Thank you.